this is the links edition for this week and it has been about the budget about inflation about negative things that are happening and oppressing you in your pocket however there's some good things going on however no one is talking about them we won't talk about them now and this is oil whatever is happening oil development is going on and billions of dollars are being spent and will be spent in the economy regardless of what's going on and tonight my guest is mr james Mosherura, senior national content officer in charge of contracts at the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. James, welcome. Thank you, Samuel. It's nice to talk about oil and, and you're the contracts man. What kind of contracts now are being dispensed at the oil development stage as we speak? Thank you. Um, Uganda is lucky mm. that we are at this time mm. when there is even a bit of uh, economic situation, but the oil is providing hope. Yes. Now, at this time, Uganda is entering the phase we call the development phase. Yes. So that means it's setting up all the necessary infrastructure mm. um, and doing what is necessary to bring out the oil from the ground. Yeah. Now, the development stage contracts are the most encouraging, mm. are the most interesting, yeah. because it's the most capital intensive sector of the industry. Mm. So setting up a pipeline, setting up uh, uh, production facilities, yeah. uh, setting up well pads. So the contracts yeah. are both in three levels. Mm. And you have to understand the contracts in terms of what area you play in. Absolutely. So we have contracts for almost all kinds of people, mm. from the bigger ones to the smaller ones. Mm. The big ones are international players, are the ones who give out a business. Yeah. So they Total, Sinoc, they are the ones who provide business for the oil and gas. Mm. Now, they give big contracts. Those ones are known as tier one contracts. Yes. To big companies. For example, the biggest we've had is building a central processing facility mm. to a joint venture between Sinopec and McDermott okay. for about $2 billion. Yeah. Now, because of the magnitude of the contracts, mm. these tier one contractors are usually big and cannot do the job alone. Absolutely. So they intend to give out subcontracts mm. to what we call tier twos. And of course, tier twos, because of the magnitude, yeah. tend to give tier threes and the chain goes on and on. Yeah. So McDermott, two billion dollars, will give a contract for camp construction. Mm. They are going to have 4,000 people in the camp yeah. to a company called Camot Beta, yeah. which is on ground. Yeah. Kamod Beta will want cement, mm. will want construction material. So they are tier two giving tier three. Yeah. The one bringing cement, the one bringing construction material, we need rollers and trucks. Mm. Those are giving tier four. Yeah. So it's understanding the chain and where it goes. That's mm. the most important. So the contracts range from the technical ones, which include drilling, building central processing facilities, yeah. um, uh, providing uh, geotechnical services. Yeah. But then there are also ones like insurance, legal people, accounting people, ticketing, visa handling, food, uh, transport, insurance. Mm. I mean, I mean, the whole scope, think about it, there's an opportunity for you in oil and gas. I know they're supposed to, people, if, if, they, do, if they want to get more details, go to PAU. Yes. If you want to want to, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, they're the authority who manage this sector. So they have all the information you can get. So find them and ask them. They will tell you now. James, let's move on. Mm. Take us through the pitfalls. And I went there because we have discussed contracts in detail before. The pitfalls that are failing Ugandan companies from getting the oil contracts. Thank you. Mm. I think the pitfalls are quite clear. Uh, and uh, from the analysis, uh, we've seen that most of the Ugandan companies, one, HSE is key for HSE? the oil. Health, safety, uh, and okay. environment. Uh -huh. It is key for the oil and gas. And we have a health and safety culture that is not the best not in the good. world. Mm. So we tend to ignore it even in the procurement process, even in the bidding process, and yet it is a very important factor. The second... Uh, James, before you go to HSC, so you, what, what are we talking about it and the contract? As a company, uh. you should be able to present in your bid and health, safety, and environment policy. Okay. Yeah. How do you take care of your health and safety? Mm -hmm. The oil and gas is very critical in terms of uh, the consequences yeah. of what can come out of being negligent or, ha or having an HSE policy that is not mm. up to standard. 
and spill alone and oil spill can mm. cause billions of dollars losses to companies so they are very key so james if i'm supplying cement banang do i need the in my contract as you are bidding yeah. you need to have a policy how do you handle your cement? Mm. How do you transport it? Mm. What are the processes that you go through to deliver to the camp? Okay. Who, so all those measures, and Ugandans have not been used to this. Okay. The second is the magnitude of the work. Most of the companies have not understood that this industry has a big scope of work. So we are used to our normal supplies mm. which don't cost uh, much and but this these contracts are the big contracts are billions of dollars mm. the mediums are mil, multi-million mm. even the smaller ones are millions of dollars for yeah. a company to do a small contract those are one, two million three million five million so you find that ugandans have not conceptualized the big nature mm. of the contracts mm. and they are still in the element of i can do it alone rather than working together to be able to do the big contracts. Together. Mm. So the element of working together and joint venturing is not seen. And companies are going alone and, f and fading, going into the deep waters mm. without understanding. Okay. Uh, the other thing that is making Ugandan companies fail is understanding the industry. Okay. You need to know that this is a new industry. It's a specialized industry. Mm. It's a unique industry. So you need to understand what is it about. Mm. So that even when you're preparing your bids to participate, the person who is evaluating really looks at it and says, this company understands what the sector is all about. Yeah. So those are some of the things that are making Ugandans fail. And so also the, the, the financing aspect, mm. I must say. Mm. The cost of money is so high. Yeah. Uh, the financing, most of the companies find it hard to even raise the finances, mm. even when they get the contracts. Later on, even to be able to participate and show financial strength in the in participation in the contract. So those are the, some of the key factors affecting companies. So it's not enough to be on the supply database. That is the beginning, actually. Yes. Uh, so the beginning is that the Petroleum Authority set up a national supply database. Yeah. And you cannot. The law says you cannot provide goods works or services for the sector unless you're registered on this supplier database. Yeah. So even to get on the database, there are four things required. One, are you incorporated or are you legally present yes. in Uganda? We don't want cases where you say it's an unexisting body. Mm. Two, are you meeting your tax obligation? Okay. Three, are you paying your NSSF obligations, mm. therefore taking care of your workers? And you have a bank account. So we find that even the businesses that we see are flourishing, yeah. the four simple things, they can't throw them them. out. Can't uh, throw them out. Uh. So formalization, bookkeeping, and having your position ready in terms of taxes, in terms of social security, in terms of uh, your business operations yeah. is very key and we're still lacking in that area. Final question, James. Uh, so you have said now we didn't understand the industry and all those other factors you mentioned. So are we at loss? Can PAU help me? Definitely. And I must say it's not all gloom. Mm -hmm. Ugandans, a, a very large number of Ugandans are participating. Yeah. They have their game, A game. Mm. They are able to participate in both tier one, tier two, and tier three mm. going down. Yeah. We have big companies that are doing health, uh, medical services, mm. waste management. The authority knows that Ugandans have not yet, all of them have not reached there. A majority mm. have yeah. not. Yeah. So there are specific programs to help them. Okay. We have dedicated programs uh, with donor partners. For example, we have the African Development Bank mm. uh, helping us with the project for capacity building of companies along the pipeline. Okay. So it's advertised in papers and companies that can benefit really apply. Okay. The government is also setting up what we call the Industrial Enhancement Center. Mm. This will be to train companies, those who do not do bid submissions, mm. they're having challenges. Very important. Very important mm. in terms of certifications because they are required for the industry. Yeah. That Industrial Enhancement Center is rolling out this year okay. and will help companies. Uh, be trained. But we're also working with private sector mm. and other players like Stanbic Bank yeah. to support training of companies and the incubator alone and others have produced over a thousand enterprises mm. being taken forward. 
but also we are working on joint venturing yeah. promotion of joint ventures and i can tell you we have success stories mm. we have the medical services for 4000 people being provided by joint venture between a ugandan and the foreign. Yeah. We have some of the complicated things like waste management services mm. being done by Ugandan and a foreign company. So there is technology transfer and that is all being promoted by the authority. Okay. But lastly, we are doing awareness campaigns. Okay. We are doing stakeholder engagements. We are doing what we call quarterly uh, national content uh, programs yeah. and conferences mm. to make sure people know about this message. We preach it to them and we tell them. And in that line, we're having our third annual national content conference on the 28th and 29th of June okay. this month. Mm. We should be able to bring all players that are in the industry mm. that are giving out contracts and subcontracts. And they will be able to tell what do they require, what are the standards, and help you to be able to participate. Should, will I pay to, uh, to attend? It is free as long as you're registered on the... <laughs> Supposing um, I have aspirations of, of getting uh, onto a database, but I want to first hear. Why well, well, you are throwing me out? No. <laughs> Believe before mm. you see. Okay. Register on the database and you'll be able to participate. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, James um, Sharula, for you know, highlighting the issue of... Um, uh, the contracts available and especially the common pitfalls. You have heard that they also have assistance. PAU is a government body and while they regulate the rest of the sector, they are willing for Ugandans to come in and gain capacity. So reach out to them. James has assured us here you'll get some help. But importantly, register first on the National Supplies Database. That was the link. Thank you for joining us tonight.